Well, glad to have you back. It's still good morning, Anambra, and it's that time where we talk about some very burning issue that affects we, the citizens, of course, and everyone and the, the country at large. And a whole lot of time, people have really wondered and asked questions that, yes, politicians come out to say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do the other one. And at the end of the day, when they don't do this, do we really have a right as citizens to hold these politicians accountable? Well, this and more we'll really know as we discuss the topic this morning, holding politicians accountable. Well, we've got some very important politicians in the House, and of course, an electorate also in the House is going to be helping us this morning. I'm talking about Honorable Elijah Unyaba. He is um, an APC candidate for Anarcha in Jakoka and Dunakofi of Federal Constituency. Good morning and welcome. Thank you very much and good morning. All right, then we still have in the House, Honorable Tony Nezianya, a public affairs commentator. Good to have you in the House. Yeah, thank I, you very much. Well. Yeah, <laughs> <and the electorate>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, well, we're talking about holding politicians accountable. Uh, well, let's, 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 let's start um, with you. Let's start with you. Uh, what do you, how, how has it been? How has it been? What do you think uh, is attractive about the politics in Nigeria such that it has become a huge attraction for people more than other profession? Is it because of, you know, the PECs, politicians, or office holders enjoy, or is it the commitment or passion to serve the people? Um, thank you very much and good morning, viewers. Uh, I like the topic and uh, there couldn't be a better time to be talking about this than now. Uh, the challenge I see, uh, I'm actually a new breed politician, so I wouldn't actually describe myself as a veteran in this field. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we've come to be able to do something differently, something that has never been done before. We've come to say that the way we've been going in the past is not the actual way to go. We've come to say that leaders, political office holders, must be held accountable. But there again, the challenge is, does the electorate actually know what they expect from politicians? That's the question. And um, I'm happy that we're going to be discussing that today. Because the thing is, if you don't have an idea of what you expect from people, then how do you what are you holding them accountable for? What would, one of the things we're trying to do in uh, today's, uh, you know, in my, 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 my campaign is to try to explain to the people the expectation from public, public officers, is to try to tell them that there are things that are, they are constitutionally responsible for. For example, someone is the president, someone is the governor, someone is a senator, someone is a House of Reps member, but the first is, what do you expect of these people? What is their constitutional rule? What do you expect them to be doing in the first instance? And then there is also another part, which is what have they come to you with in, in, in the form of manifesto? What have they said they were going to be doing for you? Uh, for the electorate, for example, uh, for, the, for the hungry, uh, you know, politics is food. Uh, for, for someone that needs a road, politics is a paved road. For, for, for someone that is in the hospital, politics is good health. You know, but again, can the person that is talking to you about providing health, does that, do they really have that responsibility to be able to do that? Every politician is very clear in their head what they want from the electorate, which is the votes anyway. Uh, but clearly the question is, uh, what does the electorate expect from the politician? And that's why when a lot of promises are made, you know, uh, sometimes I get very worried for the electorate because people are actually saying what they are not constitutionally responsible to provide. And again, it's important that we find a way of understanding these things and find a way of documenting them so that at some point you will always come back and appraise them. Because one of the things you see is that there's no appraisal mechanism. You know, I come from the private sector where you say something, you are held accountable for them, you come back and explain to the people what you have done. That's why companies have their financials. That's why they say they're going to do this and they're going to do this and they have to come back again to explain what they have done. All right, we'll still come yes. back to, come you. Back let's, to let's all that. You. But now we want to really ask the question, yes. why is it that people rush into politics? Yes. Is it because of the packs they get from it or is it because they really, really want to serve? I, I, I can actually answer from my perspective. I, 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 joined, I joined politics because I wanted to serve the people. Um, I... I 
I have a corporate banking background. I worked in the banking industry for 17 years. I also worked for governments, and I also run businesses. I also taught in school as well. So I have a good combination of academia, business, public, uh, you know, as, as a civil servant, and also as, as a corporate man. So I've got this background. I have come to be able to serve my people. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's hear from you. What's, what's your take on the same question we've just asked him? Yeah, I think he's been sincere now because he's a fresh politician like he just admitted you know so and fresh politicians all the sincerity is there you know but by the time he gets into the fray and come back and then we begin to ask him again you know are you keeping to the promises that you made to the people because he made he is certainly making a commitment to the people i want to provide this i want to provide that and they sometimes make promises on things that he cannot even provide or that is not constitutionally assigned to him to do. You know, all because of the desperation sometimes to uh, get the votes. Well, so glad to have you back. It's still good morning, Anambra. Well, we're talking about holding politicians accountable. Well, we've just been joined by another um, good politician in the house. Uh, talk talking about Honorable Dr. Pete Ibide, member representing Njikoka to constituency at the Anambra State House of Assembly. Good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. My pleasure. You're welcome to the show. Yeah. All right, we've been talking about holding politicians accountable, and then we want to ask uh, the Christian politics is uh, quite att attractive in Nigeria, and that's why a lot of people uh, try to join politics. Is it because they... Uh, and because of the perks they are enjoying or commitment to serve? Yeah, I think this year question is uh, amorphous. Uh, first of all, I can classify these, um, the, 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 the people that join politics that make it look like attractive into maybe three. You have those who come in to help to mitigate the involutions, the abattoirs, the problems that are associated with politicking in Nigeria. Of course, of course, the quality of governance. Those who believe in advocating and effecting for trajectory in governance. Those who want to make positive impact in governance. Then you also have people who believe in playing to the gallery. The, those who are uh, 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 mendacious, mendaciously playing politics, who want to be seen, who want to be noticed. And of course, those people have no roots. Then you also have people who join politics as part of seeking for employment. Some people seek for elective positions as if they are looking for, for employment. And of course, you know that these people are not serious. They do, do not even know, know where they are going. They do not have focus. So that is why you have, you look at it and see it as maybe all commerce affair. Just like you have in churches today. A lot of churches are springing up every day. You have people who are really serious. You have people who are really dogmatic, who know where they are going, who obey the rules, who obey the word of God, the Bible, who follow it rigidly. But there are people also who, look, who, who uh, 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 form churches to make money. Now, now, you, you so, okay, you talked about the all comers. Um, yes. You know, if, if you watch in Nigeria, it looks as if everybody wants to, you know, come into politics because, you know, a lot, they feel like, yes, it's actually lucrative. Now, how can we elevate politics in Nigeria to the point where we get honorable men and women and not just anybody to serve the people. How can we do that? Um, I, I think it's, um, I, I will allude to some of the things I hear said, uh, but most times, uh, you know, my viewpoint on issues is basically to stay within the confines of what I can do myself. Um, actions are usually judged by intentions, and of course, it's only God that knows exactly what is in the heart of everybody, you know, but um, getting to your question, I think that the people, the electorates, must actually look at the credibilities of the individuals that they've put in public office. That's right. I think that the public must be able to have independent opinion of the kind of people that have come to them to say that they want to serve them. 
It's only in this country that people haven't done anything for their communities. They haven't even run businesses before. They haven't even become community leaders in one way or the other, and they That's want to right. become the president of Nigeria. That's you know, that, those are the kind of things you see here. So I believe that if you are in the United States, you find out that you must have served the country one way or the other before you come and say you want to become a politician. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about the multi-party system we have in Nigeria. And most times, you know, the electorate, they find it really difficult for to pick up um, the choice they want to vote, the person they want to vote in during the election. Now, my question is, what advice do you have for electorate in Anambra State in terms of helping them narrow down to selecting the candidates they are going to vote for on the election day? He has virtually said it all, but uh, narrowing it down, like you said again, uh, is very difficult because um, it, is, it usually comes in this way, zero-sum game. The winner taking it all. That is, that, those people or those group of persons that have a lot of cash outlay buy over the electorate. And that becomes very unfortunate because the electorate, most of whom are vulnerable, are weak and often gullible because of the poor economy. So once you raise money, everybody's interested and you can't take it away from them. So someone has no money to feed for the day and you dangle a little money before him or her, of course you show interest. And as much gullible as they are, yeah. they think that once they receive that money, they are bound to vote wherever, for whoever they have gotten the money from. And that is unfortunate. So we need a proper reorientation, a radical reorientation, a very sincere reorientation, a grassrooted reorientation right, for yes, people yes. to understand actually the rudiments of the game. Right. Let, let, let me come to you now. With yeah. the way um, party politics is played in Nigeria, it is quite difficult for a lot of people to understand the manifestos of various political parties. And I would love you to briefly explain what are the uh, various uh, political manifestos of various parties. Yeah, yeah, for example, it, in your party, APC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the point is that um, the people are poor. And education is not just going to school, being able to read and understand. Uh, you know, someone said if you want to hide something just for a black man, put it in a book. Uh, the, the manifestos of various political parties are there for everybody to read and understand. Uh, but the challenge is that the people are not even interested in those areas. But I, I can summarize this issue uh, by saying that there is lack of trust between the people and public office holders. And to that extent, the understanding is that grab whatever you can grab when they need the votes because whenever they get there, they're going to forget you. But what do we do in this instance? I think we need to tell the people that religion, tribe, there are few things that play roles in our political system that shouldn't even come in the first instance. For example, people go to, go to cast their vote because a, a candidate is, you know, is, is for their religion. People go to cast their vote because a candidate is from their uh, tribe. And this is a problem. Be. This shouldn't be in the, you know, this shouldn't be. Okay, let's, let, yeah. let's, let, let's get your own opinion on the matter. Um, yeah. Manifesto of Abuka. Uh, man, man, Abuka Manifesto, I think, is the only one that is uh, being um, practic practicalized. Uh, we beat what we have in our box for the public. You can see the you have a mantra, Unyaga and one year. And the, our manifesto in Abuka, or Progressive Grand Alliance, is anchored on this mantra. Mm. On, this on this mantra of Onyaga and Amanye, do not leave your brother behind. All right. Okay? So, every other thing is, that is why and you have a lot, we, ex we experience a lot of trajectory when the a man, a Apuga man is in leadership. Just like we are seeing today, All right. and just like you saw in the past, and we see seeing in future. All right, thank all right. you. Thank you very much. All right, you, you know, we, have, we don't really have time, so we need to uh, exhaust okay. all we have today. Okay. Okay. All right, some people argue in the past that politicians make empty promises during election just to win votes. Now, most of them, they don't even have the plans of fulfilling such promises. In, uh, but in your own view, how can we really hold them accountable for all those promises they made during uh, their campaign? Uh, 
Okay, okay, okay let's go, go, go first. Go first. Okay, that, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Uh, the first I think is that um, people, we have to begin to ask people or find a way of documenting what people have said. For example, if I come to say that I will represent you, you need to understand what I'm representing you for. You need to understand that uh, at some point, because in representation, there's something we we'll call town hall meetings where I should always be with my people, tell them what is going on, tell them the discussion that is going on, tell them my opinion and some of the things that government is doing for them. So we must have this uh, constant contact with the people. I, I think that's one of the first uh, things we need to do so that we will constantly appraise some of the promises that we have made to the people and then the people can actually know if we are fulfilling those promises or not. Cool, thank, thank you. you. Okay, honorable. Honorable, from you, thank how you. can we really hold them responsible? It's still very unfortunate that our people, most majority of our people are vulnerable. Mm. And these um, uh, people that make all these false promises catch into that and uh, uh, try to capitalize on the weaknesses of our people. And uh, so that at the end of the day, when they want to, they are coming back for re-election, they come up with a lot more promises even. Mm -hmm. And our people forget so easily, so fast, that they have even forgotten the promises made previously. So, and when they start dishing out what they have from their purses, people dive and then forget what they, 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 they were already promised All in the right, past. We'll, we'll pause you on that one. While we're still holding the politicians accountable in the studio here, we also want to know what the people on the streets know and feel. What, um, what, want to know what the people on the street feel about this particular topic we are discussing. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. To give us their still worship. You said you want to represent us. Tell us how you represented us in the last you know, tenor. How many bills have you sponsored? Not matter of giving money and being voted for. You see, that is the way we measure them. Nigeria should be able to create an institution, somewhat like a platform, something that will be able to guide them through these uh, actions and promises of the politicians so that at the end of the day it would bounce back to check actually if they kept some of those promises. Somebody who does not keep to these promises would have some penalties to pay. It will start by the time they come for the political campaign. You listen to them, they give you the manifesto. They will tell you they will do this, they will do that. Now if at the end of the day what the table or what they give us on the table is okay, go and vote for them. Then while they are there for that four years, keep watching them because at the end of the day, they will want to go back for second term. If at the end of the four years, he fails to do that, when he comes back for second term, we we'll vote for him. We can hold them accountable because they promised something before moving into the seats. And we can as well hold them on what they promised before going inside the seats. And that is the major thing or the rightful thing to qualify any candidate to be voted again. And then how can we quantify them or justify them? It is by physical thing we can see that they perform. Voters should know their rights and what they expect from their politicians, their representatives, and not just mere giving them money, rights, or they see it as their rights. But if they know their rights, they should start from pre registration. All right, good to have you back. Those are people on the streets and their own views as regarding to holding politicians accountable. All right, uh, we're still right here in the studio. And uh, I want to come to you. You know, when you were making your analysis, you said that a uh, lot of people, they don't even remember the promises made to them by politicians. They are just there to collect the money. And that brings me to the question of uh, votes buying. What do you have to tell electorates who during this election expect that politicians will give them money before they cast their vote for the person of their choice? That uh, we come to that vulnerability of our people. And that vote buying is a political aberration. It's an aberration in all ramifications. We can stop it by the same reorientation of our people. And uh, coming back to the, your, your, your first question, too, about um, uh, uh, promises made by politicians and coming back for re-election. I, for one, for instance, 
I, the, 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 to some of the promises I made was that I would be the advocate and facilitator of quality governance. Mm. And today, I'm living up to that. I have put smiles on the faces of my constituents. And of course, uh, uh, like I listened to one of the uh, contributors in the, in the TV now, you talked about bills, motions, or the two ones for that matter in the House of Assembly. And then, of course, my people hear my voice, and then I've put up some infrastructure development in my place and attracted some. And then, of course, uh, other services, scholarships, and what have you. And I can tell you that if you make promises and you do not keep for to your, the promises, yeah. your people would vote you out. Right, and again, it. vote buying is, like I said earlier, is an aberration. Right. Most, everything must be done to stop it. Elections in a number of states are always done on a broadly basis, and uh, most times they're violence-free. Now, is your expectations for this year's general election? Do you think it's going to be the same? That's one. And then again, what advice would you be giving to your supporters indeed, and of course, electorates towards ensuring that we all subscribe to the code of peace and brotherhood during this coming election? Thank you very much. Um, I I think that uh, this election is going to be a very interesting election. You know, every general election comes with their own dynamics. I think this election is going to be interesting. I think people are going to be put on the spots. People are going to be voted not necessarily on party grounds, but on the things that they've been able to do or what the electorate thinks that they can offer. So that's one issue. Um, the point I also want to make about vote buying is that this concept of vote buying shows it's just, uh, you know, this is a a problem that shows that there is lack of trust between us and the people. But what can we do about it? I, I think that everybody has to take responsibility. And I have to say this because there's a community I went to in this community, and they've tried to put up a tax force that will prevent vote buying. I mean, they've tried to put that tax force, and they are saying no to vote buying. Every police station have got people that they have, you know, put together as marshals to be able to ensure that there's no vote buying. Yes. So, um, um, Pete. How do we subscribe to peace, the code of peace and brotherhood during this year's um, general election? In Anambra State. Thank you very much. General Just like you said now, in my town we have started it. Okay. So that there will be no vote buying is to, it to be thoroughly discouraged. Mm. And I tell you that people are wiser now. Even when you give them money at the back of your house and then they come out, they vote to the right person. Yeah. Oh yes. And they vote, and during, I use the Obianos election, governorship election as a good example. People, a lot of people came with money and gave the, the electorate, and they still went and cast their vote for Apuga. Oh, where right. they, 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 they best sell our cocoa. Right. I just went, a boss sell our cocoa is the yeah. norm now, is the standard. So I, wanted to, good, I, I need to just good, add good, something. Really no, 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 I, so, I, I need to add something. I think people, Politicians must realize that politics shouldn't be a do or die affair. Sure. And we are all brothers before yeah, we join politics. I will right. remain brothers after politics. All right, so brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. That That's right. It's not a do or die affair. And we're brothers before politics, and we will remain brothers after politics. And we want to say a very big thank you to Honorable Elijah Onyaba, an APC candidate for the federal constituency of Antonia Njikok and Dunukovi. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. And of course, Honorable Dr. Pete Ibide, the member representing Njikok two constituency in the State House of Assembly. Many thanks for joining us. I today. thank all Anamarians, especially my constituents. All right. Thank you. Agenda. All right, Thank you so much for joining us. I wish you all the best. Thank you yes, as you vie for your various um, elections, success, success, success. And of course, for you out there listening to us, well, it's time. I don't believe you have your PVCs ready for the 2019 general election to vote the candidate of your choice. Good morning, Ambra continues. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.